Welcome to this session on developing secure integrations with OrderCloud. As an API-first headless cloud platform, OrderCloud empowers developers to integrate with any number of services to meet commerce requirements, such as shipping estimation, tax calculation, order fulfillment through an ERP system, and any other integrations as needed. A common development practice is to create and host custom endpoints in a middleware project that can receive both user-triggered and order cloud-triggered API calls. It's essential to protect these endpoints to ensure that malicious individuals cannot gain access. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can secure these endpoints to authorized parties. Let's start by talking about a key component of almost any e-commerce solution, middleware. Server-side projects are a necessity for secure integrations with third parties. Your middleware will host the endpoints we need to secure for all the tasks we're going to walk through today. And our knowledge base at ordercloud.io offers a guide to getting started with .NET middleware from scratch. From ordercloud.io, simply search middleware to learn how you can leverage Microsoft Azure for cloud hosting, .NET Core for the development framework, and our .NET Catalyst NuGet package to access authentication features. In OrderCloud, there are two types of platform-triggered API calls that we will start reviewing, webhooks and integration events. First, webhooks are HTTP callbacks that can be triggered by any OrderCloud endpoints that write to the database, which are post, put, patch, and delete actions. Webhooks are typically used for one of two purposes, one as a pre-hook, which is ideal for validating incoming requests to OrderCloud, and the other as a post-hook, which is used for replicating state changes to another database or triggering subsequent events, like an email notification to a user. Let's take a look at a typical use case for post webhooks. As an admin user in an e-commerce application, I need to update a product in order cloud. We need to make sure that when an admin user updates a product, that the details of that updated product be sent to our third-party ERP to keep it in sync with our order cloud catalog. To begin, let's review our webhook in order cloud that triggers any time a product is updated. This is an example of a webhook that OrderCloud triggers on product updates. Note the payload URL, which is the path in our middleware that will be called following a successful product update through our assigned OrderCloud API client. Under our trigger events, or webhook routes, we specify that this will trigger on put actions. But how can our middleware verify that this request is coming from OrderCloud? This is where the secret, or hash key, comes into play. When we supply a hash key, OrderCloud will pass an XOC hash header, which serves as a fingerprint for the API request. On a deeper technical level, the hash is the base64 string resulting from the computed hash code of the encoded JSON data using a new instance of an HMAC SHA-256 class. Now, if you're using our Catalyst project, you won't have to actually worry about those nitty gritty details, but they are important if you will be handling the interpretation of this hash key yourself. Now that we've registered this webhook, let's take a look at how we can protect our payload URL in our middleware. We've pulled up our middleware, which is based in .NET Core. Our project has registered the OrderCloud.NET Catalyst dependency. Catalyst is OrderCloud's official library for building middleware, plugins, and extensions with .NET, and it contains useful helpers for authentication, which we will use to secure our endpoints. In our project startup file, we will add the OrderCloud user auth and OrderCloud webhook auth features from Catalyst. Note that we are passing the webhook hash key as an environment variable, which should match the webhook hash key that we supplied when we created the webhook in OrderCloud. It is essential that this value be treated as secret, so we are securely retrieving this from Azure's app configuration. We never actually store the raw value anywhere in the code base. Now we can mark our controllers or action methods with the attributes registered in our startup file. The payload URL we defined in our OrderCloud webhook will hit this route. So all we need to do is mark this with OrderCloud webhook auth. The endpoint will now check the hash key to ensure this calls authenticity. If the hash key is not provided or does not match the constant we supplied in our startup, a 401 error will be returned. Otherwise, if they match, the call will proceed. We're going to try this out right now using ngrok, which is an efficient way of testing your local host on the internet without actually having to deploy your code. And it's free to use at ngrok.com. ngrok will generate a base URL, and this base URL will forward requests to our local machine. 
Now in our example, in order cloud, we are not using a secure hash key in our webhook. And this value does not actually match the value that's expected and is stored in Azure's app configuration. Therefore, when we update the product and send the request, when the webhook triggers, you can see in our command prompt that the endpoint is called. However, since the hash key does not match, we are successfully returning a 401 and not actually granting access to this endpoint. Now we're going to try this again, but our webhook in order cloud has the correct hash key. Now when I do a put on a product, our middleware will successfully intercept the call and our breakpoint is hit past the authentication checkpoint. Integration events function similarly to webhooks in order cloud and are designed to facilitate some of the more custom behaviors in your e-commerce solution. In the example of checkout, marketplaces will have different preferences on what third parties they want to integrate with for tax calculation. And those services could have different workflows and payloads that they expect in order to return those estimations. Calling OrderCloud's order calculate endpoint will tell OrderCloud to call the custom implementation URL supplied in your order checkout integration event and ultimately return a response that can be stored as an extended property on the order worksheet that OrderCloud builds during checkout. Like webhooks, these integration events also store a hash key in order to create a hash of the request body sent to your custom URL. Let's take a look at an integration event for order checkout in OrderCloud. Just like last time, we've defined a base custom implementation URL. All checkout related integration events, such as shipping rate estimation, order calculation, and order submission, will share this base URL and depend a path based on the type of checkout integration occurring. You can find these paths in this ordercloud.io article under implementation. Just search for order checkout integration event in our knowledge base to see which paths are called as part of your checkout integration. It's important to define the secret hash key, and then we can implement this in our middleware just like we did for webhooks. We will also want to make sure that we've edited our API client that we are authenticating through and making our calculate order call through. In here, we will assign the ID of the checkout integration as the order checkout integration event ID. As we did for our hosted middleware endpoints, we will simply need to mark our endpoints with order cloud webhook auth. And the hash will be checked to ensure the call's authenticity. Any mismatched hash will result in a 401 error. Finally, sometimes you will need to integrate with services outside of webhooks and integration events. As an example, an elevated buyer user in our marketplace needs to submit a tax exemption certificate through our buyer application. This call will go to our middleware first before going through a third-party tax service. And when we get that response, we want to be able to patch the ID of that certificate as an extended property on our buyer resource. We can specify what security role a user must have to access our middleware endpoint, and using Catalyst's authentication tools, we'll be able to read this role and return a 401 if the access token included in the request header is missing this information. In this example, we are going to mark our endpoint with the order cloud user auth attribute and pass in any number of roles. A user's OAuth token must contain one of these roles in order for the call to proceed. In this case, we'll use the order admin role that order cloud supplies. Now we've successfully leveraged order cloud security features and catalyst authentication to protect this call to our tax service. This concludes our session on developing secure integrations with OrderCloud.